Well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi met his Pakistani counterpart Nawaz Sharif today. Modi welcomed the Pakistani Prime Minister with a warm handshake and a broad smile and posed for the media. The meeting was held at Hyderabad House and was also attended by Minister of External Affairs Sushma Swaraj. India talked tough with regards to the issues of terrorism emanating from Pakistan and that how Pakistan needed to take tough action against groups operating from the country. Speaking on the touchy topic of 26-11 attack, the Prime Minister raised the issue that the trials carried out by Pakistani authorities were not satisfactory. Modi even said that a conducive atmosphere must be created for to go ahead and he also rooted for regional cooperation on terror is what sources indicate at the moment. And well, after the all-important meeting, before coming to the content of what exactly was discussed, uh, let's also tell our viewers now that uh, Nawaz Sharif is currently in talks with former Prime Minister Vajpayee. Let's not forget that uh, when uh, the former Prime Minister was in power in 1999 February, Vajpayee had gone on a historic bus yatra to Lahore in Pakistan to meet Nawaz Sharif. He had gone along with his delegation, which included uh, Jaswat Sinha. And Vajpayee is believed to be one of the prime ministers who made a crucial attempt, a serious attempt in reviving ties with the neighboring country. My colleague Vergis joins us with more details on this. Well, Vergis, first of all, take us through the latest updates. What is happening now? Well, at present, uh, the, uh, the Pakistani Prime Minister is in fact meeting with uh, Vajpayee, the architect of the Lahore Bas Yatra, which was uh, supposed to have heralded a new uh, a chapter in the relations between India and Pakistan. And uh, the ailing Vajpayee is in fact, uh, uh, he's gone to see the ailing Vajpayee at his residence in New Delhi. And uh, what we also know at present is that he will address the media at around 2.30 uh, uh, and we are expecting some hints to be thrown as to regards to how Pakistan, the meeting between Modi and uh, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Nawaz Sharif, actually went. Uh, and we'll probably know exactly how, uh, whether there was actually some kind of ground broken uh, with regards to the frostiness and the ties, or uh, will it uh, still remain, and as to whether Pakistan intends to take these talks further uh, in improving the relationships between both the countries, uh, Nishita. Right, absolutely. And speaking of what was discussed in uh, the all-important meeting between Narendra Modi as well as uh, Nawaz Sharif, we understand that the issues on the priority list were that of terrorism as well as MFN. Well, uh, the issue, on the, of course, was on terrorism. India was quite concerned with the fact that the probe on the 26-11 terror strikes is not uh, going in a satisfactory manner, and uh, Prime Minister Modi did, in fact, uh, raise the issue with his counterpart on that matter. But also, there were other issues with regards to terrorism that were also raised uh, in the meeting, and also Modi said that terrorism emanating from Pakistan should stop, uh, for and a conducive atmosphere should be created so that uh, there will be domestic support for peace talks to go ahead, and that only in a conducive atmosphere can... Uh, uh, relationships go further and uh, progressive uh, uh, progress in the, uh, the development of the region take place, uh, Nishita. Right, absolutely. And uh, also we understand that uh, this can be, uh, it, it almost appears like Narendra Modi has taken cue from Vajpayee, the way he governed the country. But also it works both ways here, we can say, uh, Vargis. While on one hand, for Narendra Modi, it's very important to build his international image. Uh, Narendra Modi is uh, a personality which has not exactly been welcome you know, on many international platforms. So this particular meeting with Nawaz Sharif, with his Minister of External Affairs, certainly holds key to it. Well, one thing about this meeting, Kli, as you rightly pointed out, is that it is of uh, posturing on the international arena. But at the same time, also, uh, it is very crucial in defining who our neighbors are. And in fact, here we see that Narendra Modi has defined India's immediate neighbors. And SARC being, uh, is in fact moving for SARC cooperation and also as a, uh, making sure that SARC becomes an important regional powerhouse. So, uh, first of all, he's starting with uh, domestic foreign policy, and that is where he's in fact started and has defining India's neighbors. And probably after that, uh, he will be in fact.
fact going into the international uh, uh, realms where uh, very important countries will be involved and as you rightly mentioned uh, they had in fact had a resistance towards Modi but you can see that America once this election was confirmed did come out with positive statements so on the international uh, level uh, we are looking at a situation where uh, Mr. Uh, the Prime Minister, new Prime Minister Modi will in fact uh, will be looking at his domestic foreign policies first and then will try to ex uh, expand his relationship with other foreign powers. Right, and also uh, do we know what is the rest of the itinerary for Narendra Modi uh, as of today? Well, uh, after the meeting with the, uh, what we know at present is today is going to be uh, the foreign po uh, day when the foreign policy is given in media. So uh, today what we know at present is that uh, he will uh, uh, conclude his meeting with the SARC leaders and in fact uh, call for a small meeting with uh, the uh, other cabinet ministers. And he's also in fact... Right, has a right. Uh, we'll, we're bringing you live visuals at the, the moment. Uh, Nawaz Sharif there meeting uh, President Pranab Mukherjee. Just a while back, he was in talks with Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the former Prime Minister, the man who was also credited uh, to attempt to revive ties between the two countries and now on the Rindal Modi following suit as well. After which, Nawaz Sharif uh, in talks with President Pranab Mukherjee. These were the scenes from earlier in the day, soon after the meeting. It was a warm handshake that was exchanged between the two Prime Ministers with broad smiles on their faces. Nawaz Sharif uh, uh, attending a series of meetings uh, since uh, yesterday's oath-taking ceremony. And this is uh, the meeting that he has, that he is in currently with President Pranab Mukherjee. Well, uh, there we have it, uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif in talks with uh, President Pranam Mukherjee. Now, work is coming back to you, the series of meetings with Narendra Modi, with Atal Bihari Vajpayee, with the President. It go only goes on to show very symbolically uh, that even for Nawaz Sharif, that even for Pakistan, good ties at this moment are very, very important. Well, it does show, Nishita, and one thing that we must understand from all this is that uh, Pakistan is willing to go that extra mile. But the problem is uh, who are calling the shots in Pakistan because even though the civil dispensation requ uh, is in fact looking for better ties with India, there are other factors like the army, the intelligence agencies, and also its domestic uh, religious fundamental network which uh, it has to cater with. So uh, these, these uh, three factors also in fact call the shots. So uh, though the civil dis uh, civilian dispensation understands that good ties with India is important. Uh, there are others who could derail it. But uh, again, we see that uh, a series of meetings because this is the first time, in fact, uh, after the 2611, we are seeing uh, the frosty ties between both the countries, in fact, uh, seeing some kind of thaw and looks like the head of the Pakistani Prime Minister is ensuring that he's been, he, while in India, he'll be able to, in fact, uh, interact with all the important leaders. Uh, so as to, in fact, give a case of Pakistan's good relationship that it needs to foster with India. Nishita. Right. right. Uh, thank you for joining us with all those details, Bergi, as well a series of meetings for Nawaz Sharif there, first with uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and then with former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee. And now, even as we speak, he is in talks with President Pranam Mukherjee. And well, getting back to the big story that we're tracking this hour, ADGP and IPS officer Ravindranath is now facing an FIR for allegedly clicking pictures of two women without their permission. The ADGP, who was uh, reportedly in plain clothes, was at the Obope restaurant. And uh, soon after, he saw two girls in a nearby seat, he had started clicking pictures. Well, in fact, just uh, a few minutes back, an FIR was registered against him, and now we see the ADGP sans his uniform, sans his the designation, heading to High Grounds Police Station after submitting his official vehicle, heading to High Grounds Police Station to surrender in connection uh, with the case. These are the scenes that you see. The ADGP is currently seated inside an auto rickshaw. He has given up his official vehicle. He is dressed in plain clothes. As in this case, he is primarily an accused. It was reported that uh, Ravindranath was in fact in plain clothes when he went to the Obopan restaurant. And... Uh, 
Soon after he saw two girls sitting in a nearby table, he removed his uh, cell phone and reportedly started clicking pictures and videos of the two girls. A hue and cry was raised and the public thrashed him. The girls even slapped him and that's when he was uh, taken away to the High Grounds police station until which the cops did not even know that he was an ADGP. Well, uh, there we have it. The ADGP has reached the high grounds uh, police station, but it will certainly be interesting to see what is the kind of action that he will face, considering that he is a fairly high-ranked officer. He is uh, someone who is now accused of uh, clicking pictures of women without their permission. He is also denying all these accusations quite blatantly. He claims that his uh, phone was snatched away. In fact, we can even see him uh, ordering around uh, the police officials inside the high grounds police station, although he has entered merely as an accused. Well, we are also told that when he spoke to the media right outside the police station, he was in tears. The IPS officer, who is an ADGP ranked officer, is now accused of being lecherous and is accused of clicking pictures of women without their permission. My colleague Nabila joins us uh, with all the latest updates. Well, uh, Nabila, we understand that uh, Ravindranath has been uh, extremely emotionally overwhelmed uh, with all the developments. Absolutely, uh, Nishita. There seems to be some sort of guilt on his face. Uh, he, he reached uh, the high ground police station to surrender himself. And uh, just as the media came in front, uh, trying to capture his, uh, you know, to take some photographs of his, he broke down in front of the uh, cops and uh, in front of the media, uh, saying that he hasn't uh, done anything. He uh, uh, Even there, even in front of the police, high ground police, he, he outrightly denied the entire incident. But the fact that he broke down and he, he got really emotional, uh, so, sort of uh, hints at something else altogether, uh, Nishita. Uh, for now, just to carry out a free and fair investigation, the, uh, he has surrendered himself and the high ground police station uh, cops have uh, right now taken him to that uh, particular coffee shop on Cunningham Road, uh, trying to investigate uh, the matter even better. At the coffee shop itself, uh, even while uh, trying to narrate the entire incident, he still uh, is uh, sticking to his stand, saying that he has not done any uh, mischief, he did not click any sort of pictures, and that uh, uh, a third person came and accused him of it, and the women... Uh, Listening to the third person, the women reacted and slapped him and surrendered him to the police. So uh, even even now, um, Raghavendra Raghavendra seems to be uh, sticking to his stand here, getting quite emotional, and uh, yeah, it, it remains to be seen now what the course of investigation uh, brings out, Nishita. Right, absolutely, and we also see him entering the high grounds police station and pretty much ordering the police officials there, which is quite surprising as he has entered as an accused in this case and not as an ADGP. Well, I, uh, what we need to remember is he's not yet proven guilty. Uh, he has been accused of a crime, but uh, he hasn't yet been proven guilty. Uh, uh, looking at this, he is... He, still holds his position as a senior ranked uh, ADGP officer with the Karnataka State Reserve Police. So he, he does hold his position. He has the authority to say what uh, or speak the way he uh, speaks to the police. But uh, just that, uh, it, uh, it remains to be. Right, uh, right. Uh Nabila, thank you for joining us uh, with all those uh, details. Well, certainly it remains to be seen what is the kind of action the ADGP is going to face then.